welcome Joystick Justice League to the second episode of Roundtable with me, Mike Frusios. I'm Joe Moran. And we're about to get into a lot of the new devices and existing devices that are making up the mobile gaming market right now. So we're, we're going to think a little bit outside of the box right now. We're not just talking about iPhones or Galaxy phones. or We're, we're, we're going to be covering a whole wide range of devices for a wide variety of tastes, I'd say. Uh, Joe, so let's, let's, let's uh, kind of get into an overview of some of the things we're going to be talking about, specifically in relation to mobile gaming and gamers. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna take a look at uh, what everybody's got to offer here, and, and you know more importantly, you know to see what's gonna be a, uh, you know it's 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 really I think it's gonna come down to what you want uh, out of a portable device when it comes to gaming because you know every platform's got got its its strong point and its uh, its downsides I think. Yeah, it really depends on what you want it for, and and I, and I really think it's yeah. also going to come down in a sense to what other functions you want outside of gaming that that kind of two kill two birds with one stone mentality. So well, let's get started with it. Um, let, let's talk about the, let's start off with the Microsoft Surface and specifically the Surface versus the Surface Pro because each of them has two different functions depending on what you're willing to shell out and, and how much gaming you want to do. So so give us a little bit of a breakdown on, on, on the Surface Pro and the Surface for anybody who doesn't really know about these these devices. Well, it's. It we got the second generation of these now, and it's uh, it's it's got the touch. Uh, the first generation of these, they, they were classified as the, the the Surface RT and the Surface Pro. It was very clear cut. This time, they're just called the Microsoft Surface and the Surface Pro, and the, 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 they are two very very different uh, animals. They, they basically uh, RT the, uh, the the regular Windows Surface is going to run just the what they, they used to call the RT stuff and, and, and the Pro is more kind of like a portable PC so to speak. Right so okay for anybody who has just the regular Surface it has it has like a, a laptop functionality I mean you can pull out a, a touch based keyboard and, yeah. it, and it's running Windows 8.1 so you, and it actually makes sense to finally be able to use that Windows 8 overlay with your fingers which uh, you know it, it makes sense now. Yeah, and it has quasi desktop functions. I mean, my nephew got the regular Surface for Christmas. I tried it out, and what's really cool is that you can actually still use the traditional Windows inter desktop interface, but now you can do it with touch interface as well. So you can open up like a window and your your documents. You can actually pick files, which is which is kind of interesting. Gaming wise, though, you're gonna you're gonna run into a bit of a, a wall there. We, we tried desperately to see what you could do with gaming on this, and it really comes down to the Windows lot games for Windows, which is already on its way out. They're already taking titles off of that marketplace. So what are you going to find on that particular Windows Live Marketplace store? Uh, you're going to find just uh, you know, mainly your traditional kind of uh, mobile games. You're going to have like Angry Birds and, uh, you know, and that kind of stuff. It's uh, As for some of the... You know the the uh, games like Colossitron and some of those other kind of better ones that uh, have been showing up on iOS and Android. Unfortunately, I don't think that you're going to find too many of those on here. The best of what I've seen so far, it really comes down to the the, the top of the top. You know, Rayman, Jungle Run, Jetpack, Joyride. But yeah. then you've also got the holdovers from from decades, uh, like Mahjong, Solitaire. So it's really not meant to be a gaming device. It really is a pro productivity device. The fact that it comes with Microsoft Office Suite bundled in with it, which I think actually is a good bang for the buck, considering how much you'll pay for it. And the fact that you can use it as a laptop, really, it was bought for my nephew just to be used as a device in high school to take notes, do his homework. And for yeah. that purpose, it works well. Yeah, the one, th one the one thing that people will notice when they when they go to use uh, when they switch over to that desktop mode, and thankfully the uh, the service uh, well it, it's you're going to buy the separately the the keyboard uh, cover, it has a, it has a the uh, the um, the trackpad on it, and thankfully because if you were if you were to just use the Surface and go into the the desktop mode and try to use Office, the the, uh, the icons and your, your targets are so small. That if you didn't have uh, the trackpad, you, you you would have a an ex you would have a tough time using uh, the Office Suite on the Surface without that that trackpad. 
Yeah, I agree. But it, it's an inexpensive add-on. It actually works better than I thought. I mean, it, it in does. terms of making it like a rubber compound, mm -hmm. it, it absorbs the shock of your fingers hitting that surface. So, you know, it yeah. takes a bit of getting used to, but you'll, you'll get used to it. And I, and, I, and I see how it would be good for, as like I said, as a productivity device that you can tweak. Remember, you can go into the control panel, the device manager. Yep. You can do a lot with this thing that you necessarily maybe couldn't do with like a competitive iPad, you know, in terms of you really want to tweak this thing. True. Very true. But here's where it def def differs. I mean, you're, you're going to see, I think a lot of people are confused as to gaming on the Surface because there's a Surface Pro, which is now out, which, you know, God bless them. I see a lot of people on YouTube trying to, you know, make this work as a games device. And, and to some extent, they have. We, we watched a video together of Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag being played on the new Surface Pro 2. So, so what did you think about this, seeing how it ran? It uh, you know it, it runs, but I, I gotta say it's it's not uh, it, it's it, it it frankly it didn't impress me that much. I, I think you're you're really gonna be wishing you were playing on something else. I think you're running on minimal settings. It's at yeah. like it's 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 trying to make thirty frames a second. You know if if you wanted to see what like Assassin's Creed would look like on maybe a PS2. You know it's 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 it's, it's interesting, but I I really think with with the affordability of, of you know, a PS4, or someday an Xbox One, or even a, a PC, like a dedicated gaming PC that could actually run Assassin's Creed at better than the lowest settings. Yeah. It really does look hard, kind of hard and flat, but if, if that stuff doesn't get to you, you can still play it. I mean, it's, you technically can play it. It's not stuttering to a halt or anything. It does run at, at around 30 frames a second, so it's not terrible. And, and you gotta remember too, there's a whole backlog of like older PC games, you know, that you can still yeah. run on this thing too. So if you, if you want to sure. say like, they've got Diablo 3 running on this thing. So if, yeah. if you can handle having, I'd say a lower res version of a game, you absolutely need to play it on the go. Then you'll be all you're right. Not, you're up, you'll be all right. Yeah. So that's about as far as you can, but I would say if if you're trying to get into like PC gaming as like a hobby, just, just go and buy a damn Steam box or, or go and buy an actual dedicated PC. Don't, don't, try to do this on your surface again i think it's a productivity device it's yeah. really good for business people students to do word processing and stuff like that on the go check their email photoshop all that maybe even light editing i've never tried it but it might be yeah. capable of doing it it's gonna be it's gonna be good for doing some of the, the occasional casual gaming but it, it's it, as for as, as for doing some real kind of core gaming that uh, that we like to do uh, i gotta say it's not uh, it's definitely wouldn't be one that i would pick yeah, absolutely. So you have to know the limitations of what you're going for, but uh, exactly. I think most people would opt for the affordable Surface. Again, you're going to hit a limit. You're not going to get the full extent of the Android store or the iOS store. You're going to get like a select few. So that's right. steer clear if that's that's your that, that's your forte. Next, yeah. you can talk at length about this because you've had experience with this device, the new Apple iPad Air. So tell us about this as, from a gaming perspective. It, for, as For a gaming perspective, I mean, you've, you've already got the, the, the tremendous library of uh, iOS games. You, know, you got you got ones that I've talked about, Colossal, Tron, Bastion. You've got a number of really, really good, you know, XCOM, you got a number of really, really good games and they run excellent on, on, on this uh, on this platform. And not only, not only the Air, the new iPad Mini, which is arguably better because of the size of it. If you if you hold an iPad Mini in your air in your hand, sorry, <laughs> it feels it, it feels very very natural as a gaming device. And spec wise, the the the, uh, the new iPad Air is identical to the uh, or sorry the the new iPad Mini is identical to the to the Air spec wise. It, it, it's a it's a shrunken down version of that same tablet, and it, it is it, it's. Uh, a very very good uh, device to play games on, and it, just a humongous library of really really good games on. I agree. They, we've we've really gotten to the point with the the mobile gaming market where uh, platforms are getting exclusives, and the one that immediately sticks up my mind all the time is Haunted Hollow by Fire mm -hmm. Axis, uh, the makers of XCOM Civilization. They made the Haunted House Simulator that kind of plays like XCOM, but you can't get mm -hmm. it on Android yet, and that bugs me. I can't get device yeah. six on android that bugs me or i can't even get yeah. xcom you know that kind of sucks especially that what we're going to get into some android devices actually can play these games i think what you showed me with the ipad air is that this device not only plays the current games properly but it's future proof in the fact that it can play you know clumsy ninja 
and yes. all these new games that are using the, the next generation game hardware for mobile gaming. So maybe talk a bit more about where you think iPad Air is heading with what we're seeing in stuff like Clumsy Ninja and beyond. It's, uh, you know, the thing with the, this hardware too is that they've, uh, they've included a, a, a motion uh, co-processor that uh, takes care of a lot of the, du the duties to, uh, to, to give the main processor a bit of a break. And uh, that, that's a, a feature that uh, some of these uh, games like Clumsy Ninja, for example, are going to start taking advantage of. Yeah, especially with that with that motion sensing capability that the iPad has now, that it's very precise. You know, it's almost like the PS Vita in some senses, in the sense that you can really use the geometrics to enhance gameplay. Now, um, yes. I think I think the only thing that, in terms of being compared to a lot of the other devices on our list, is that this is probably the most expensive device. It, it, it is. It is uh, definitely the more pricey, but you're 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 getting a, it's it's a you know the thing with this is that. Uh, you're 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 getting a, you're paying a, a premium price, but uh, for a premium product, you're not you're not overpaying for something that, that that's cheap. You know this this is a made of plastic. You know it's a, one of the reasons why they are able to make this new iPad Air so thin is that uh, is that they don't make it out of plastic, and they don't have to worry about the heat, uh, about this thing getting too hot because they they use it, aluminum instead, right? It, it, it the, the the whole underside of this tablet is, is like a heat sink that just draws the heat away from it, so that uh, that, that isn't an issue. And part of the reason why some of these other tablets have to be a little bit thicker is they that thermal envelope just doesn't allow them to go any thinner with the plastic. Yeah, you know, and, and we, we talked about this often in terms of audience and platform fragmentation in regards to Android and how it competes with iOS. This is what, it, even though it is more expensive to get an iPad Air than say a Galaxy or an Xperia Z, yes. you're getting one platform, one operating system, that's it. It's the same that I would have as you would have, whereas with Android, you've mentioned this many times, it's the fragmentation, the fact that Jelly Bean and KitKat and it, it'll work on one device versus the other. I mean, I'll give you an example. I have the Xperia Ion first generation Sony smartphone that yes. for a while it was fine, but then you start throwing out stuff like the, the GTA 5 iFruit app and all of a sudden there are compatibility issues and I can't yeah. run it. So already, boom, I've hit a wall and I want to upgrade. And, and there's just different experiences among different Android platforms. There's no real unified vision or leader with Android. It's all fragmented, like you said. And I think well, that's why it's been stumbling to catch up with iOS. And it's important to know that with the Android stuff uh, as well as that. Uh, you know, for for the regular uh, space, some people having a, you know, a Samsung, have an HTC, who have Sony. You know, the, the majority of uh, I've done some research on this. The, the majority of those regular Android users are, are still running ice cream sandwich and gingerbread. These older versions of Android that are getting close to four and five years old now. And then you, you go to the other side, which is the, the Nexus experience, and, and and that is, it's the, the the pure Google experience without the overlay. And but the big thing with that is, is that you will always get the latest update. You will always have the latest version of Android, which is which is a big deal. Yeah, but that could also be a hindrance too, depending on the platform you have. Because I'll give yes. you another example with my phone. Once I did run the, the latest Android, all of a sudden I started a slowing of performance. Like it crashes yep. more yep. often. I, I, I notice now that when I go on IGN mobile site, that it crashes. Like there's just too much data for it to handle. That's why a lot yep. of these newer games, I'm afraid I won't be able to run on my phone. Like for now, I'm fine. But even then, I, I, I like I said, I'm missing all of these games that are coming over to iOS. And yeah. that I, I just can't play because I don't have an Apple device. The the Android uh, devices just don't seem to be d designed looking far enough ahead. You know that, that that's sort of thing. I'm, I'm like especially like you're saying you're going to to, to, to upgrade and, and it's just it, it, it's just not working properly. And that's you know one, one thing with the, the iOS stuff is that uh, you're going to be good for for quite a few versions of iOS coming late, later on. Whereas with the Android stuff, I, I gotta say it's uh, <laughs> it's it's, it's a, a little really, too. Yeah. It, it, it's a very fragmented experience. Yeah, and, just no and I think they're I think they're biting off more they they can chew in terms of the advancements of each yeah. stage of the operating system, which I found with the last iteration and update. It just can't my phone can't handle it, and that's yeah. why you need something like the one we're going to talk about next, the Samsung Galaxy Tab 3 10.1 that was revealed at CES 2014. Uh, so I'll ask you what you think about this, knowing what we know about Android. It's got a dual core processor, one gig of RAM, 1.6 gigahertz dual core, 10.1 inch display. So already it's a little bit bigger than the Air. That's right. And a three megapixel camera. So 
it, it runs Android. What do you think about this one? It's it's um, running already a, a later. It's uh, I, I mean I'm sure it'll get updated to KitKat, but I mean it's already kind of behind the game already. It's it's still running. Uh, you know, it's still running the, the, the previous version, and uh, you know, it's uh, and the big thing that uh, with that tablet is they designed it around that S Pen. That, that, that is the main feature, and that's what, really what they concentrated on when they made this tablet. Is that that S Pen, you know, the features that it, it has, and, and most people that, that, that I've talked to that, that have used that it is, it ends up not even being a feature that they really even use. It would be good if you're into, you know, artistic apps, like where you could actually use that pen to maybe do some digital art or maybe some Photoshop touching up. But it's just funny. I mean, when comparing that to what Sony revealed at CES with the Xperia Tab Z, it's just double the power, Yeah. you know, about the same price. I mean, I when I, when I, uh, when I have to look at like something that really, truly competes against the the iPad Air. I've got to look at this Sony Xperia Z. I mean, this thing's got some horsepower, and they're 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 throwing some some useful features. And and, and stepping back to, to the Samsung uh, stuff, uh, I, I watched the uh, when they, they they did their their presentation for the for the Galaxy S4, and it, it, it was so bizarre. And like the it, it just it seems like to them they just they throw on a bunch of features that. that uh, just for the sake of having more features, you know, not, not throwing in actually useful features that users are going to end up using. Yeah, and, it, and it's funny, the lack of other features, I was surprised to learn that the Galaxy Tab still does not have inherent PlayStation Mobile support. No, It's not it on doesn't. the list, which no. I found kind of dumbfounding. I, I, I personally am a, a user of PlayStation Mobile uh, because of my Vita and my, my Xperia smartphone. I have two platforms I can play these games, and man, these games are, are making some noise, okay? Not too many people know about PlayStation Mobile yet, but I, you've got Square, Square Enix making games for it now. You have, you know, stuff like Passing Time, Rimmed Capsule, some really heavy hitting indie titles on this thing. Yep. And the Xperia tablet is the only one that's gonna have it. Not even the Nexus has it. We looked so at really, that. you've got yeah. Android and PlayStation Mobile and possibly, because this is still a rumor, Nintendo. Yeah, that what do we know be, about this? Like we've heard that they want to get into some educational Android-based titles. Yeah, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see if Nintendo if they they venture over there. But uh, I mean, uh, there's been you know some recent uh, stuff going on with uh, Nintendo and uh, you know with uh, with uh, them even kind of looking at uh, making the, the big guy step down. You know, it's uh, they're, Iwata. They're, 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 Iwata you know, refuses to step the, down. Yeah, they, it, it's for any of you who don't know yet. They they projected a, what I think uh, 13 million consoles yeah. by the end of March 2014. They only hit like two point something or three. Yeah. Really bad, really bad. Really, really Even bad. the DS, the 3DS, not quite as bad. It only fell short no. by about two million units. But the Wii U would be grounds for somebody to get fired. Somebody's ass is well, to get absolutely. fired. But Iwata says no, man. Proud Japanese dude. He's like, I gotta stay on. Yeah, and he even said like we're gonna be restructuring our focus. I think that focus is gonna be the mobile market. I think they already know the power that they have with the 3DS, which we're also gonna be getting into a bit. Yes. But I feel that because Android's starting to get get up there, and I think by default. And here's why: I'm noticing a lot of people, especially in business, now that BlackBerry's kind of gone, it's done. They want Pretty the much. Galaxy Note. They want that big ass smartphone that they can do texts, emails. Yep. I see a lot of people switching over. I don't know why it's happening. People who, I think it's most of the BlackBerry crowd. I don't think anybody with an iPhone is trying to purposely switch over to Galaxy, but I think no. that big screen has more, is attracting more people than I than I originally gave it credit for. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it all comes down to, you know, with, with, the, with these tops, you know, it, 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 it's a, you know, people shouldn't just choose a brand because, say, that they're an Apple fanboy or they're a Samsung fanboy. You know, when, when people go and buy, and buy these devices, they really need to look at what these devices do, as opposed to, to what they want to use it for, and make their choice accordingly. Don't be just don't be married to a brand. Exactly, exactly. Because, like I said, I mean, it's it's very easy for at this stage of the game to say yes, iOS is the gaming platform of choice. Like I said, exclusive after exclusive after exclusive, plus all the stuff you'd see in Android. So really, it's like. It's, it's like this, uh, it's, it's, it, there's a margin, but if Android starts to come under the leadership of Sony, which S Sony seems to have the closest relationship with right now. I mean, the Xperia yeah. Z to me is the best Android gaming tablet, 
hands down from the specs. Yeah. Plus, you've got PlayStation Mobile, and if they had Nintendo, yeah. that we're talking about a, war, a mobile war here. Yeah. I don't think we're ever going to see Super Mario Brothers on Android, but I think we're going to yeah, see like know. you know math games or whatever, yeah. kind of mobile friendly. Maybe a mobile touch based version of Mario Party that would be pretty cool. I think that's what Nintendo's got to do. I, I think they've got to just chalk up the Wii U to as a niche console that they'll they'll yeah. still continue. They'll do another price drop. It'll still be out there for the people who want to buy it. It'll never compete directly with PS4 and Xbox One, but they can. I think they can leverage that inequality by getting out, getting their asses into the mobile arena like they should be, because they, everybody knows it. That's what Sony's trying to do with PlayStation yeah. Now. Yeah. You, you you literally have a you'll have a war between between Sony and Nintendo on the same platform. Like that, yeah, that no would, kidding. That, I mean that that would uh, you know I don't think that's ever happened before. But so. I think they can support each other like they've always kind of yeah. done. I mean, and when you really look at the, the 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 makeup of the industry, Sony and Nintendo don't really compete. I mean, they're they're both Japanese. They they're I don't know. I don't really want to get into that topic. That's another uh, another podcast. But yeah. I, I think that I, I think that. No matter how many odds you stack in Android's favors, no matter how many companies sign on, if you don't have one kind of figurehead running this this whole thing, it's disorganized. It, it, exactly, it becomes like Linux, where it's 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 amazing, but it's never mainstream because it's no. just too fragmented. Yeah. And I, so, that, and I got I got to say that that's one thing that uh, iOS does have going for it is it's a, it's a very it's a very unified. organized, very unified thing. Uh, between uh, between the iOS devices, whether it's an iPhone or whatever iPad you have, it's a every, every, everything seems to work nice and seamlessly together. And that's because every, every, everything and all the the platforms and all the users are using the same version of the uh, operating system. Yeah, it, it comes down to how genius it was when when iLife, the idea of iLife came out and how, how well it's done and how Sony is pretty much mimicking it now. I mean, I think Sony's definitely taken those steps now, especially with cloud-based gaming, having your PS4, your Vita, your Bravia, yeah. your tablet all interact. Now, with the, and one thing we forgot to mention about the Xperia Z tablet and the Samsung is that they have the one-touch technology. So that if is you, a cool thing. Yes, so if you have a Bravia cool. TV, you can literally take your smartphone or your tablet yeah. Touch the TV and stream high def video and music right to it. So again, the, Sony's uh, PlayStation ha ecosystem that they call it yeah. is really catching up to iLife, especially when PlayStation TV most likely drops this summer. That's almost kind of like their their take on kind of like the Chromecast. That's similar to what the Chromecast does. It absolutely is. And uh, you know, and one thing to another thing. To mention with the the iLife and everything uh, that stuff on, on uh, the iOS stuff, when you buy a new iOS device, whether it be a new iPhone or an iPad Mini or Air, you get all of the iLife and iWork suites for free. I love that. It's just so like you said, like you said, it's you a just real got your point. you got your Mac uh, a few days ago, and right out of the box, you were ready to go. Like you had every app there, pretty yeah. much. I awesome. mean, it, it's just, and that's the way really it's it's starting to happen with Sony as well. I mean, when you get a Vita. Boom, every app you need to connect to that PlayStation ecosystem is there at your fingertips. Really easy to get streaming to your PS4 and vice versa. So I, I definitely see it getting interesting, but again, if, if Android's really gonna take this clout they're building up and do something with it, they need somebody leading the charge. Like they really need a figure yeah. that Android can't be splintered. It'll never have, it'll never be unified mm -hmm. like Apple is. Well, we'll, we'll, see, we'll see how that goes. And with uh, the, um you know, it, uh, this is kind of venturing off our topic a little bit, but uh, even with uh, my Mac, like the the, the newest, uh, the newest ver the the, uh, the operating system, it's being offered for free. Like uh, Mavericks, I I installed for for free. It didn't cost me a fucking cent. That's fantastic. Right. It um, you know, in comparison, uh, and this is really going to put some pressure on Microsoft with Windows, and so <coughs> we'll see how, how they respond to that. But that's I'm getting off on a bit of a tangent there, but. No, you know, I, I, th I think uh, I think you're right. The fact that you made a very good point is that when you you know you buy an Apple device, you're not going to have to pay to upgrade. Whereas think, some unfortunate Windows away. 7 users are being forced to buy yeah. Windows 8, which pisses me off. And what I th well, the reason why I think that Apple's uh, decided to do this is to kind of soften the blow a little bit for the, the price that we're paying. And you're I, already I th paying I, enough through the gate, right? And I, th I, th I think I think that that's making it a little bit more tolerable to spend like a. You know, a hundred or two hundred dollars more for these platforms because you're getting all this 
all the software for free. And, and support, you can, too, you, man. Now you, now you can almost justify spending a little bit extra. Well, and support, too, man. I mean, it's the fact that yeah. everybody knows that if you're within warranty, you go to the Apple Store, you just get a new device, you know, like if something's wrong with it, in most cases. But I'd yeah. say their policy is up there with, like, Dell in terms yeah. of just, you know, quality, customer service. I'm not trying to advertise for Apple here. I'm just talking about what I've known because I've dealt with the yeah. Apple Store many times, and, and they're very good. They are very but uh, yeah, so let's let's kind of switch gears. We're still talking about mobile gaming, but not everybody needs a tablet. Not everybody needs uh, something like that to, to connect to the internet, to watch movies, to listen to music, to game. There really are other devices that are that had a rough beginning. Both of these devices we're going to be talking about had a very rough start, but through some clever business moves and some re-strategizing mm -hmm. on both sides, now these two devices, I would say. Like, I, I have the next device we're going to talk about, and that's why I haven't had a tablet for a long time, because yep. the PlayStation Vita does a lot of the stuff that you can do with a tablet, albeit on a slightly smaller screen, but yes. an awesome OLED screen. So, you just recently got a PlayStation Vita. Let's talk about your experience with that. Not just from ga gaming specifically, but what else you can do with it. I went to, uh, what, you know, it's, uh, I've done a variety, of, it, you know, for, for gaming-wise, I mean... Uh, I mean, uh, I've been playing the, the, the crap out of Hotline Miami and that thing. That's why I've been pl uh, the, the, for that game. That's the main platform I've been playing it on. But uh, you know, the the big feature with that, you know, which is actually making me excited to get a, a PS4, is this is the ability. And we've talked about this before to stream your PS4 games on the go. And not just like we're not talking about a choppy, low res stream. Runs, like we're talking yeah. if you have a good connection. <laughs> We're talking almost identical. And keep in mind, what, what uh, you know on on PS3 when they tried to do this in the previous generation, that was a broken, horrible experience. So for them yeah, the to, way to, to actually do this on on the PS4 is a big deal. I've been using remote play since the PSP. Okay, so and and until the PS4 came out. I really just viewed remote play as a way to access my music library on my PS3 yeah. and my movies. Like, let's say I'm in a hotel room somewhere, boom, I, I've got my music library via stream. Yeah. But it's so much more than that now. I mean, you can literally, if you're at a good Wi-Fi spot cross country or across the sea or something, and you can handle it, boom, you've got Battlefield 4 loaded up in your PS4 or even better, digitally on your hard drive, you just connect it and you're playing Battlefield. It's a, That's pretty it, it's damn a, it's awesome. A, it, it's a very, very, very good selling point uh, for uh, this game, and uh, you know, and, and some other things too. Like when, when I bought this, it came bundled with uh, the whole season of uh, the original Walking Dead. I thought that, yep. that was a, a brilliant bundle that they put together, and uh, yeah, I mean, wow. I think if it weren't for the remote play, I think that would have been the deal breaker for the Vita. Like the Vita was already on very fragile ground. I mean, and that's the funny thing that it has an amazing library. It had a great launch. It's a powerful system, but the 3DS is the 3DS. And we're gonna talk about that after. Like with the 3DS just blew the Vita out of the water game wise. Like in terms of native games, the Mario machine. Yeah, for, for sure. And, and it uh, definitely attracts those. And uh, you know, it's, yeah. It, you know, with the with the the, the Vita, I mean, uh, uh, you know, it's uh, we're still. I think we're still kind of waiting for kind of that killer native app on it, and I think we're going to get it with a game that we actually talked about on uh, the previous uh, episode of Breaking News, and that is Freedom Wars. I yeah, think that, Freedom Wars. I, I'm excited to see that game on that platform. I think I think it's gonna. It, it, I, th I think it will sell some of those systems that in uh, samurai gun are gonna be two i think two, two games that are, that are really gonna gonna give us a little bit of a boost and it may, may not bring it uh, quite up to the level i think as the ds but it's definitely gonna help those two games i think it's gonna help that system out quite a bit well, I mean, I'm already seeing it now. I mean, I was definitely one of the, the few poor bastards that bought a Vita near launch, <laughs> and I've been trying to justify it to people for, for a long time now who are kind of laughing in my face. And I yeah. even said to people a long time ago, I'm like, if they get remote play right on PS4, you watch Vitas go out the door, and they have. Yeah. Now that yeah. people have seen it, I'm noticing more and more people saying, oh, you know, I need to get that Vita now. And, yeah. and perfect timing for games like Tearaway to come out, and the Batman spinoff from Arkham Origins, yeah. and Killzone Mercenary, and not only that, but if you check any upcoming 2014 list, Borderlands 2, man, online, on the Vita, 
Wolf yeah. Among Us, Walking Dead Season 2, and like Sweet. you said, Freedom Wars along with all these other JRPGs. The Final Fantasy X reboot is going to be on there. Yeah, there are, that's this a, is going to be nice the RPG go-to. I mean, you can play RPGs so. on the iOS store, you can play RPGs on Android, but we're talking about full-on AAA RPGs yeah. that at this point, I know iOS is going to catch up with their new hardware, but really, when you look at a game like Killzone Mercenary, like yeah. what other mobile platform could you possibly do that game on? That game is like literally a carbon copy of the PS3 version, which is already a graphical achievement. It is, yeah, and uh, it's a, uh, you know, it, it, uh, it, it, it's, it, it took a long time. It's taken taken a long time for this for this uh, platform to kind of to kind of find its. Uh, where it needs to go, but I, I, I really think that we're going to really, really see it take off with some of some of uh, the stuff that we're uh, going to see uh, coming soon to it. And, yeah, and I, 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 it's it's not going to it's going to get to the point where you know, we're not going to have to justify the the PS Vita to people. And like I said, I mean, outside of gaming, let's just say you don't even care about gaming. This can be a, a, a mobile YouTube device. It has a fantastic. Oh, sure. HD YouTube device. It's got Twitter. It's got a yep. Facebook app. It's 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 got music unlimited and video unlimited. If you're a subscriber, yep. uh, Nico Nico, which is like this anime streaming site where you can actually draw comments on the screen. Yep. The stuff is there. I mean, and like I said, I don't need a tablet yet because I can do a lot of stuff on my couch, like check Facebook and watch some YouTube on it, and then even stream my PS4. So it's, it's definitely a buy, especially with the new Slim Vita, which it unfortunately is only going to have an LED screen. It's not going to have the nice OLED screen, but it is thinner, it's cheaper, and like I said, if you if you want to have that second screen experience with your PS4, you want to be able to shut the, the TV off so your, your girlfriend can watch your soaps and you still want to keep playing. <laughs> Yeah. NBA 2K. Well, you can do that. I'm interested. I'm really interested to actually, actually see that uh, that slim and what's gonna what's gonna look like. That's uh, I think that's uh, that that slimmer version is gonna sell extremely well. I think. I think so too with the price point and bring it more in line with with the 3DS as to where it's coming up. So talk about the 3DS. Wow. Talk about an underdog Cinderella story. Talk about yes. a system that was nearly down and out until I would say probably Mario Kart came out for it. Around yeah. that 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 fall or so, when all when like all the Mario games started coming out, and now with Zelda, the sequel to A Link to the Past, and you've got Mario Party on there, Bravely Default, which is huge, uh, Monster Hunter. This thing really is becoming like if you do, if you're not looking for like, it, I'm not saying it doesn't have social networking. You can even stream Hulu yeah. on it, which is pretty cool. But yep. it's not going to give you like Facebook and all that kind of stuff. It's really just for gaming. It's the, it's the, the go-to platform for Nintendo fans right now. It really is. It's it's the yeah. thing that's keeping Nintendo alive. Yep. It it, and, 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 and it really is. is like again, if you're just looking for a mobile gaming device, you don't care about all the other wider YouTube kind of stuff yep. and apps and all that fun stuff. I would say arguably this is the one to get. This has a huge library. It plays old mm -hmm. DS games as well. Yep. You can get in different versions. You got the 2DS, which you can get, which is just a slab for I think like 120 bucks. It's very affordable, much cheaper than the Vita. You can yep. get the 3DS XL. Um, I, I really think that like the 3DS, yeah, again, just for gaming wise, it really is uh, out of all of these platforms, probably the better one. Uh, I, I would, I would, uh, I would agree if if you're uh, if you're looking for strictly a gaming platform. Yeah, and I, and I think what has to happen now is when they do go to their next generation of handheld device, it's got to go to where I think the Vita is trying to go, where you need to be able to stream this stuff to your TV. I think that is the next step. Like, that would be awesome for somebody like myself who broadcasts all the time. Yeah. That would definitely make me buy a 3DS faster if I could actually broadcast what I'm doing. I don't think you can do that yet, but at some point, there's got to be some kind of HDMI out or some AV out from that Nintendo portable device to have that two one functionality, almost the reverse of what the Wii U is. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll see if they do that something. But I mean, uh, you know, uh, as we said before, Nintendo kind of they live on this kind of island, and we'll, we'll see if they if they if they broaden their horizons a little bit. Uh, it's, I mean, I, I hope that maybe they'll you know with some of the kind of recent issues they've been having, that maybe they'll step out of their so called comfort zone a little bit and kind of branch out a little bit instead of just kind of just having the blinders on and just saying, you know what, we know what we want to do and. You know, and just go with it. You know, the, 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 the whole thing again. What we said before, you know, telling people what they want instead of listening to what people want. 
Absolutely, they gotta they gotta get off that island. You know, they've gotta start sticking their head out, seeing what everybody else is doing. They can't create in a vacuum anymore. They don't have the clout. This is not the mid '90s where everything Nintendo touches turns to gold. No, there is competition out there that's outdoing them, and they need to get their game on by actually seeing what the competition's doing and and thinking ahead of the game like they used to, rather than just kind of reacting and and throwing out special characters for Smash Brothers as like a big so and so yeah, quote unquote big reveal. Like this is ridiculous. People gotta get fired it. from that place. It's not now. gonna cut it anymore. You know, and we just saw, you know, their stock price drop way down and and, and uh, you know, I'm not gonna go as far as saying that they're they're in, in serious serious trouble, but I mean No, they're not. They, 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 they're uh but uh, they, they they gotta get it together and uh you know it, it's you know can they can they salvage the Wii U? You know? No we'll see. It, it's uh it, it's We'll see how, how they do if they decide to come over onto it to do some uh, some Android stuff. You know, it, it's I'm really curious to see with uh, Nintendo if they're gonna if they're gonna try and save themselves. Uh, I really hope that they do. They they have the time. They're not like yeah. Sega. Like they're not in the situation that Sega was in when the Dreamcast came no. out. They had no money in the bank. Like Nintendo has yeah. at least 10 billion yen in reserves oh, yeah. to insure them against the potential Wii U crash. I hope not, but. The 3DS will at least carry us into the next generation of whatever platform they do. And like I, like we said Absolutely. before, if they really try to get their heads out of their asses and get on with the Android partnership, yeah. they can provide an incentive to turn people away from Apple. And that's when we get that's competition. Sure. So, and that's when great games come out. Yeah. No, so, you... yeah. No, go ahead. Um, I was just gonna say, like, uh, do you have anything else to say about the current? Because I really want to just finish this up just by talking a little bit about. A few things that are on the horizon to maybe add to this list. Well, on the, on the horizon, let's take a look here. Specifically, let's start with the Nvidia Shield, which is actually out. It, this it is. is kind of like the first one out of the gate in terms of streaming PC devices, like mobile tablets that provide a true PC gaming experience. So we we talked about how you can get a pseudo PC gaming experience on the on the Surface Pro. Now let's talk about two devices, the Nvidia Shield and the AMD Project Discovery tablet that was unveiled at CES 2014, has yet a date to be released or a price. It's probably gonna be in the avenue of the Nvidia Shield. We're talking about like 350 yeah. bucks, okay? This is not a Vita, this is not a 3DS. This is expensive, okay? This 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 is this is for PC gaming on the go streaming. So so what do you think of this? Like in terms of somebody who wants to approach PC gaming on the go as a as a actual hobby. Uh, I would uh, I, I would uh, keep it on us. I, I wouldn't uh, you know uh, especially the AMD one. I'm quite frankly a little confused uh, even just at the look or, or or what this is running or what it's going to be able to do. It's it's you know I mean it's still I mean I'll, I'll I'm gonna. We'll, we'll wait and see what it, what it, what it can do, but uh, you know, it's. Uh, it, I'm, I'm not. You know, I'm, I'm quite frankly, I'm just confused at uh, really what that is, to be honest with you. Yeah, it just it seems like a, a great way to show off like new processors, and, and really, I mean, I'm sure people with a few bucks, extra bucks in their pocket, could yeah. could fork out for something. But I saw the AMD Project Discovery. That thing's a little cumbersome. I mean, it's it's a it's a hefty device. It's got yeah. two external analog sticks. Yeah. Um, it's it's definitely not something you're gonna put in your pocket and no, go on no, the. No, you might need a backpack for that one. You know, yeah, it's, uh, I think it really is for somebody who just lives in a large house and. And just is sick of sitting in their stuffy basement all day, so they, they maybe want to go outside on the yeah. patio. I, I think at the price point, I think with the, with what the trends I see in terms of what devices people are able to shell out for, I don't think they're going to be a serious contender because it's, I, you have two classes: the people who can spend about maybe two three hundred bucks, and that kind of limits them to like a Vita, a Galaxy, yeah. an Xperia. Um, or the people who can shell out for like an iPad Air, but if, if those people want a PC gaming experience, like I said, why don't you just go and buy a PC or a Steam box? I mean, it's really a little bit more, but you're gonna get more functionality of it. I, I don't think these streaming PC devices are gonna be the new trend until they get smaller yeah. and it's possibly a, even take advantage of data plans. You know, you, you, got, you, got, you, got just, you gotta look at, you know, what, what games are you gonna wanna play? And then you look at okay, what devices are the, you know when it comes down to choosing any of these devices that we've been talking about, you just need to look at okay, you know what what do I want to use this for? What games do I want to play? Then make your decision accordingly. Like I said, don't be married to a brand just because you're you're an Apple fanboy. Don't uh, you know just don't just stick with that. I mean, look at what you want to actually do and base your decision accordingly. 
Absolutely, people like we always say, play games, not devices. So, exactly. I guess to kind of sum all this up, really just kind of going over it, the iPad Air is pretty much the top of the heap. I mean, in terms of gaming, in terms of apps, some productivity. I mean, you, can yes. you hook up a keyboard to the i to the iPad Air? So over over Bluetooth, yes, you can. Yeah, but there is no external storage. People need to know this. About uh, that, the that's air. you know, and it, it, it's uh, you know, it's uh, whatever storage you have in there, you are stuck with it. You can't, uh, you, without uh, breaking into this thing, you can't, uh, you can't access the, uh, you can't, you can't upgrade, you know, f yeah. for for lack of a better term. You know, it's, uh, the, the only uh, tablets I know about are, uh, I think, uh, with uh, the the Nexus 10, the the one skew of that you can uh, you can upgrade a little bit. Some of the uh, some of the other. Um, <clears throat> RTs like I think Dell's I think you can uh, you can mess around a little bit the hardware but I mean the, the iPad really is, is sealed off you know it's it's intended to be you're, you're getting what you're, what you're getting you know all, all, any external storage is in the cloud yeah and and cloud storage is a huge thing now and it, it works very well so I would say in terms of comparing I'd say if, if I had to talk about the two competitors iPad Air versus the Xperia Z tablet I would say the iPad Air wins by hair only because of yeah. what PlayStation Mobile is able to become and the yes. possibility of Nintendo coming in I think that playing field could be more leveled I think in terms of just pure gaming it really depends on how much you love Nintendo's franchises. I yeah. have to say natively the 3DS absolutely wins over the Vita but yes. if you have a PS4 then I really say that the Vita is something you definitely want to invest in for a couple hundred yeah. bucks. It all, it, all, it all depends what uh, what kind of gamer you are. That's what it comes down to. Yep, that's absolutely it. And yep. uh, so that's been a pretty good roundup. I'm sure things are going to change as soon as we even broadcast this. But uh, yep. that's basically kind of our overview and uh, of, of the mobile gaming market as it stands. I'm Mike Frusios. I'm Joe Moore. And this has been another episode of Roundtable. Stay tuned to Joy Joystick Justice League on YouTube for more content, including more breaking news, more Judgment Day, our new show Joystick Justice League Battle Arena, where Joe and I either do co-op or multiplayer gaming online or couch co-op. And yep. also another fun show called Rage Quitters, <laughs> which we just recorded our first episode of, where I sit down doing Super Meat Boy and Joe just heckles the shit out of me. So it's gonna <laughs> be a, blast, a lot of great stuff. Like us on Facebook. Joe, you got anything else to say before we wrap up today? Uh, as always, you guys can uh, check out my blog at joemorin.blogspot.ca. I'm always uh, putting stuff up up there. I just uh, did one on uh, on how uh, multiplayer has uh, evolved from uh, the old couch days to the online multiplayer to where, where I think that uh, things should be going. And uh, you know, I'm always uh, putting stuff up on there, so check it out. Yeah, and I've also got my blog that I haven't been as faithful to recently, but there's still a lot of stuff to read. Uh, alarmbellnetwork.wordpress.com. I do uh, game stuff. I also do movies and music. So check it out. Uh, so this has been another episode of Roundtable from the Joystick Justice League. Uh, remember, always, as always, guys, support indie games, developers, yep. broadcasts, and journalists, and uh, game on. Game Peace. on. Peace. Peace.